Welcome back to the C-Suite. I'm Danielle Deshaw. In this segment, we're going to be talking about really that presence that you have and the impact on your personal brand. Here to talk about personal branding is Hannah Marie. She is the founder of KW Headshot. And really, we're going to be really diving into kind of what her brand is, how she's evolved it, and how she, she can help you evolve your brand as well. So welcome, Hannah Marie, to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk about personal branding because it, sometimes we think it's like those really nice and warm things like logos and colors and things like that, but it really, it's a lot deeper than that. Like, what is your definition of personal branding? Yeah, personal branding. I mean, I think of business branding as all of that and the websites and all, you know, the fonts you choose, which I also love to talk about, but um, personal branding is more about the feeling that you give others when they're in your presence, whether that's on Zoom or in person, the way that you present yourself. Um, if you're too formal for a situation or too casual, then it might make other people feel a little uncomfortable or not even necessarily aware that they feel uncomfortable, but just something's a little bit off. So personal brand is just being aware of um, not only the image you're projecting, but also how you're making other people feel in your presence. I like how you're talking about really focusing on the feeling that you're giving others, even though typically branding, it's all about, like you said, it's that visual, it's those first scenes that you're seeing when someone's either walking into your office or looking at your website for the first time. Yeah, and if you think of it, you go to a website and a website should be designed in a way that you either like know for sure that this is the right company or they're just repelled by it. And that's kind of your personal brand too. Like not that you wanna repel people, but just being aware of that. So for example, in my studio, if I have a law firm coming in, I'll dress more to the law firm style of like the white button up shirt, dress pants, uh, maybe a nice pair of loafers. And likewise, if I have like a fitness instructor or a musician coming in, I'll dress a lot more casually in jeans, maybe a black t-shirt, um, just something that matches more what they're, they're feeling that day. If I have a variety of people coming in, I kind of dress to the most dressy, <laughs> but they need to see me and know that they can trust me. Um, if I'm wearing like Lululemon pants and a t-shirt and a law firm comes in, they might not realize it, but they might have this sense in the back of their mind, like, does she know what she's doing? But if I'm dressed to their level, then like, they'll have no questions. I can just fit in in their office any day and uh, they'll feel a lot more comfortable in front of my camera. Mm -hmm. So in your opinion, how much does personal brand impact like that no like trust factor? Yeah, I would say quite a bit because also like if you don't have a strong personal brand and you're kind of projecting a different thing every day um, and just still trying to figure it out, like a lot of um, young people, maybe you don't necessarily know what your brand is going to be going forward. Um, it can almost cause confusion and um, make people wonder like, is this? does she really know who she is or is she just kind of going by the seat of her pants, which a lot of entrepreneurs do and I do too. But um, I think when you have a consistent brand that you're projecting, then it gives a really big sense of confidence for the people who are hiring you. And you have two businesses that both in photography, but they're very different and they have different feelings and looks and brands to them. What was your process for kind of identifying that you needed different looks and brands and how did you go about really distinguishing yourself between the two? Mm -hmm. So on my um, family website, it's a lot more warm and welcoming and engaging. And, you know, um, people need to be able to trust me if they're hiring me to hold their like two day old baby <laughs> and put their baby in different positions and knowing that I know how to do that, but also that, um, that I'm someone that they would welcome into their home, especially in COVID. Um, and likewise on the business site, like they don't really care who the photographer is, I don't think. Most of them just like wanna find the information they're looking for, uh, know how to book and then get the information they need to prepare and then have it done. So it's very, very quick, hands off, um, almost like the faster, the better. And so you'll see the wording on my two websites very different, but also the images I'm projecting. The images on my family site are a lot more about building relationship. And the, the images on my, my headshot site are very just, here are a whole bunch of headshots and here's the information you need. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like really kind of those images, the word, like everything put together as part of your personal brand, it almost sets people up for what to expect when they are mm -hmm. going to be working with you in the, in the type of session that they're coming to see you for. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Even in terms of how to book my headshots, they just email me and we get them booked in right away. And the families schedule a time for a call. So before we even talk about dates, I've had a full phone call with, with those clients 
because we again we need to get to know each other better whereas with headshots it's just oh you want to come in tomorrow okay we'll book you in and they have their headshot the day after so it's quite a different process mm -hmm. and i guess that process comes into the brand too right how we build that out mm -hmm. Absolutely. And for anyone who's really looking at potentially shifting their personal brand, they've had a change in business, a change in scope, or they've personally changed, mm -hmm. kind of where would be a place for them to, for, to start? Yeah, well, thinking of where you want to be, I know um, there's a quote from a big business leader, somebody asked him, like, how, how did you get this company to where it is today? And he said, well, you know, when I was first hired, I thought, where do I want to be? Like, where, what's the end goal in this company? where where will we know we have reached like okay we've reached it and he said once we figured that out then we just started to behave like the people who needed who were already at that end point and i think that's really wise because it's very easy to just think like okay well i'm not there yet so i won't quite do this or that or i don't need to like project myself this way but if you start projecting yourself as the person that you need to be when your company is at its end not that it's ending but like you've reached what you're building it into then um I think that's a good place to start because then you can envision who your ideal clients are and start to project that towards them. It always sounds like a fun, like now you kind of get to envision like, who do I want to be? And then really truly become that person mm -hmm. and evolve into them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Hannah Marie, for being here today, talking about this idea and this concept around personal branding and how it's truly all about how you're showing up for yourself and really uh, for those that you're working with. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.